I recently had an opportunity to speak to Mary Amber. Mary, for people watching that may not have heard of Mary Amber before, how would you best describe your music? Okay, um, I play geek pop. It's kind of like pop music with significant doses of dweeb. Um, just like think ninjas and lasers and going crazy on stage and wearing chopped up <laughs> superhero shirts. So I perform at comic conventions and such things a lot nowadays, which is really fun. Um, yeah, that sort of, that sort of stuff. Geek pop. Okay. You have a really good size American fan base. Being an artist from Australia, how have you been able to achieve that? Well, I guess the internet is the only answer. I would love to actually travel to America. Like still ever since I, I've obviously known John for a while and it's been years and the whole time I've been like, I'm going to go to America and I haven't managed to get to America. But at some point I would love to get out there and actually meet people and for us. And, but the internet's kind of the one thing that can do that right now without plane tickets. <laughs> Has traveling influenced your music? Well, I went to Italy with my partner and uh, his family and stuff is all in Italy. And I went to Hungary as well. And that's because my family is over in Hungary. So they shipped me over there, which is really cool. Uh, it's helped a lot, like in terms of when I went to Italy, I took my ukulele because we were kind of doing the whole backpacking thing. And a ukulele is easier to carry around than a guitar. So came back and wrote like <laughs> a song at 4 a.m. when we weren't like exploring Italy and put that on the interwebs. And then uh, I, I recently just started releasing uh, some songs that I recorded when I was in Hungary and I re recorded them like probably in a studio and stuff with a Hungarian producer. And that's been mad sick. Just, it's really different with the different language as well. Like, I guess it wouldn't be the same in America though it might be, I don't know. There's kind of different words for things and they approach music differently. So like what, what I think of as a refrain is not what they think of as a refrain. And then they will be calling things different things. And like, it's, it's pretty cool. You like learn new ways of approaching stuff. Definitely worth doing. If you're a muso, it's a good excuse to travel. Okay. <laughs> Behind every great artist is normally a great support system. Mary, can you tell us about some of the people behind the scenes that have helped you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll start off with, obviously, the second half of Mary Amber, which is my partner, Patrick. And um, he is, like, he's definitely at least half of Mary Amber. He is the filmer, the photographer, the moral support, and you have no idea how important that role is. <laughs> He's my roadie, uh, and we scheme together. So we sit down, like being a musician is basically coming up with crazy ideas and then acting on them. So we'll sit and we'll scheme together. And then um, he'll always be like, don't worry, just do it. When I'm always like a bit of a perfectionist, I'm like, it's not ready. And so just do it. <laughs> so he's um, the second half of Mary Amber. And uh, in, the, in the recent video, um, I just put up, he makes a slight appearance and a photo. In the first video I put up, he was driving the car in the video. Um, but he otherwise kind of refuses to be in the videos and he doesn't even want credit for things, despite the fact I've been bullying him for, for ages. So he's kind of got a little bit of credit here and there wherever I can slip it in. But it's Patrick, look him up, he's amazing. And even if he refuses to have that credit, I'm going to give it to him anyway. Um, so that's the other half of Mary Amber. And yeah, he's the important half. I just sing. <laughs> then there's my parents. I can't thank them enough. Like I, I still live at home with my parents. So they, they um, give me edible food because when I cook, it's usually inedible. And they support me like heaps. They still come along to some concerts, not all of them, because I told them to stop coming to all of them. <laughs> but um, they're still a huge support. And um, yeah, my mum is still probably my number one fan. She's obviously in real life a fan more than <laughs> in the virtual world. But she'll support me with everything and get me to put my songs onto her phone and mp3 player so she can walk around with them yeah 
it's really cool. Tell me something you enjoy outside of music that your fans might not know about. I don't know. Well, there's, there's a lot of things they would know about. I'm pretty open. I've got my own comics, so you can read that on my website. I like making comics and I hang out with the comic group in Sydney with other comic artists and I go to those sorts of comic events and things because they're really inspiring. I think the time you knew me, I was making number plates, which is how it all started, where I do calligraphy and art and they kind of be in these little boxes, right? And it occurred to me after doing that for about a year that I'm basically making comics and I, I was never in the world of comics until this kind of dawned on me, dawned on me and then I met a whole lot of other people that like combining text and pictures and making comics so that obviously is a big thing I really enjoy I like tea chocolate pizza like half my Instagram is pizza. If you, if you want to see my personal life, I use my Instagram as kind of like a personal account, which is why it's exceedingly unprofessional and half the photos are just me eating pizza. But um, <laughs> there was this one day they had, um, I'll, I'll just bring this up. They had a free pizza day. How incredible is that? It's a make your own pizza and it was free. Like you could pick whatever you want on your own pizza and it was free. It was the best day ever. <laughs> Mary, tell us a little bit about the music you have available now. Uh, got my moral support coming with the CD. Yay! Thank you. There we are, CD. Um, so I did like a big tour in support of it at all the Comic Cons and things, and the Book Expo and some zine fairs last year. And uh, this is my main EP. It's got my Superman boobs not my superman boobs everyone seems to think it's my superman boobs but they're two separate songs uh kudos friday viral some of us nothing's in your way that's the ninja one then we which is the one where i won a competition a songwriting competition and um so i just whacked that on at the end and that comes with a comic i made too so in like the album booklet it's got it's like a comic that i okay. wrote and inked and colored and stuff that's my main one. Right now I'm also releasing postcard singles. So if you look at my networks, they're the ones that I recorded in Hungary and I'm releasing them on postcards. Mary, tell us about your experience winning the People's Choice Award at the Australian Independent Music Awards. That was pretty insane. Like, I didn't really expect to get anything when I entered those awards. And then I guess when I noticed people were voting, I started pushing it and being like, please continue voting. And then when I won it, it was pretty cool. Um, I don't have many big win things that happen. So <laughs> it was really nice to, I guess, feel like people would choose me for something. And um, yeah, I guess that the, there was this big ceremony. It was, <laughs> it was actually really funny because it seemed exceedingly casual and I performed at it. And it was strange how they set up the performers. They had like a DJ stage and they had like a band stage and then they had the acoustic performers and I perform acoustically and um, they didn't know what to do with them. So they actually stuck us in a toilet and we were performing in this really big toilet. The acoustics were great, right? Because everyone loves the whole singing in the shower thing. It's just very awkward because I had like people standing around watching me in a toilet, but um, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was really fun. And uh, I guess it was an experience I won't forget. You seem to get really great interaction with your fans on social media, especially on Google+. How have you been able to do that? No, no, that's, that's a really, really odd one because I guess I was posting to nobody for a while. So if you're doing that right now, don't give up because everyone goes through that where you post and nobody seems to be paying attention. Um, just go and comment on other people's stuff if you're interested in it. If you're not, then don't waste your time because you'll get into the conversation with someone who you're actually not interested in and it's hard to get out of that. Just literally be yourself. And if you're interested in something, comment on it. If you like it, comment on it. If you want to be part of something, ask if you can be part of something. If you enjoyed today's interview and would like to help us support indie musicians, please take a second to check out our Patreon page by clicking the card above. I get asked all the time, why do I do what I do? as far as helping musicians. And being someone